Hello and welcome to this edition of NASCAR's Lost Teams, King Racing. King Racing was founded in 1986 when legendary drag racer Kenny Bernstein decided that he was going to move into the world of NASCAR. Well, see, Bernstein was, like I said, a very successful drag racer in NHRA beginning in 1979. By the end of the 1985 Cup Series season, he decided to find an existing team and an owner that would be looking for a partner. Kenny settled on the number 16 team owned by Bobby Hawkins, and indeed originally intended on it being a partnership. Within about a month, Bernstein went to Hawkins and just offered to outright buy his part of the team as well. Not only did Bernstein now have a team, he already had a sponsor, make, and a driver as well. For the 1986 Cup Series season, Ken and Bernstein formed King Racing, at the number 26 Quaker State Buick, with veteran Joe Rutman behind the wheel, full time, and legendary crew chief Larry McReynolds on top of the pit crew box as crew chief. For their first season, King Racing had a very solid season. Their best finish was second twice in the spring at Richmond and Martinsville. Overall, they were able to score zero poles, zero wins. 5 top 5s and 14 top 10s, on their way to finishing their inaugural season 15th in final points. At the conclusion of the season, Rutman and King Racing parted ways. Then, for the 1987 season, the team signed another veteran in Morgan Shepard to drive that number 26 Quaker State Buick full-time. Now, Morgan had drove, spent a little bit of time in that Bobby Hawkins number 16, uh, that, like I said, this team was prior to becoming number 26. So, they were a little bit familiar with Morgan. Now, their best finish was second in the spring at Charlotte. Overall, they were able to score one pole, zero wins, seven top fives, and 11 top tens. On the way to finishing the 1987 NASCAR Cup Series season, 17th in final points. Like the, series, like the season prior, at the conclusion of the season, the team's driver, Morgan Shepard, left the team. That following season, in 1988, King Racing signed yet another veteran in Rocky Road. Their best start was first twice in the spring at Charlotte, or at Martinsville, in Riverside. Their best finish was first in the summer at Watkins Glen. That win was the first in the team's short history in NASCAR. One major factor that plagued this team in 1988 with, was with engine failures. I mean, jeez. This team, so King made the racing, the, the decision, King Racing made the decision to move from Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. To Huntersville, North Carolina. And Bernstein built a new shop during the 1988 season, including a new engine shop. He also hired Lou La Rosa to build the team's engines from 1989 on. Overall, they were able to score two poles, one win, six top fives, and 11 top tens, en route to an 11th place points finish in the in 1988's Cup Series season. Now, Bernstein added another division to King Racing in 1988 when he would form a kart IndyCar team. In 88, they entered and qualified two entries in the Indy 500. The number 15, Jim Crawford, finishing 6th, and the number 17 of Johnny Rutherford. He finished 22nd. The following season, in 1989, Ricky Rudd was again behind the wheel of the number 26th Buick. Their best start was fourth in the spring at Sonoma. Their best finish was first in the spring also at Sonoma. That team went from in 1988 having 11 engine failures to in 1989 being the team to complete the most laps. An incredible improvement. Overall they were able to score zero poles, one win, seven top fives, and a 15 top tens on their way to finishing their first and only 
Top 10 points finish, 8th. At the conclusion of the 1989 NASCAR Cup Series season, Ricky Rudd left King Racing to take over the number 5 Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet after Jeff Budai left the team. King Racing came back to Indy in the to the Indy 500 in 1989, and again, did qualify with Jim Crawford at the number 15 Buick with a bull chassis. They were able to finish 19th. Another Bodine will become the new full-time driver of the number 26 Quaker State Buick, Jeff's little brother, Brett Bodine. Their best start was first in the fall at Charlotte, and their best finish was first in the spring at North Wilkesboro. This was the team's third and final NASCAR Cup Series victory. Also, this was driver Brett Bodine's one and only Cup Series victory. Now, in 1999, or 1990, believe it or not, NASCAR Cup Series races were still scored by hand. Not yet by on-road on telemetry or computers at all, actually. In 1990, NASCAR events were being scored by a number of officials watching the race from different points of the track. Then, all, all of them getting together to make sure everyone agrees on what they saw, and that's it. Well, a caution flag came out during a round of green flag pit stops, and the pace car mistakenly picked up the wrong car, thinking the leader was Dale Earnhardt, when in all actuality, the number 26 of Brett Bodine was supposed to have been the leader. At least, if you ask Brett Bodine or Larry Reynolds, that's what they will tell you. And the other drivers did have a whole while left in the race, more, more than enough time to have the opportunity to get past them, if they could. I'm just saying. The number 26 Quaker State Buick team was able to score one pole, one win, five top fives, and nine top ten, finishing 1990 NASCAR Cup Series victory. NASCAR Cup Series season 12th and final point. Next up was a 1991 season, but only four races into this season, the team's crew chief, Larry McReynolds, left the team all of a sudden to take the place in suitcase Jake Elder as the crew chief of the number 28 Haviland Ford, driven by Davey Allison for Robert Yates Racing. Driver Brett Bodine tried to rebound the best he could by winning the pole a couple weeks later in North Oaks World that spring. Their best finish was second in the fall at Martinsville. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, two top fives, and six top tens on their way to finishing 19th in the final points. King Racing also made the 1991 Indy 500 with Jim Crawford in the number 26. Then, Roberto Guerrero made three starts in the number 26, also with a best finish of 15th. In 19... 92, again, Brabodon returned to the number 26 Quaker State Ford team. They were forced to switch from Buick to Ford due to Buick pulling out of the sport at the conclusion of the 1991 season. The team also was able to sign a new crew chief full-time, Bodine's brother-in-law at the time, Donnie Richardson. Their best finish, their best start, was first in the spring at Dover. Their best finish was third in the fall at Martinsville. Overall, they were able to score one pole, zero wins, two top fives, and 13 top 10 finishes on the way to finishing a solid 15th in final point standings. On the IndyCar side of the team, Jim Crawford made the Indy 500 again this season in that number 26, finishing 25th. Roberto Guerrero also made the Indy 500 in that number 36. He started on the pole, but finished 33rd, dead last. He also made one other, other start, finishing 13th. The following season, in 1993, the number 26 Quaker State Ford was once again piloted by Brett Bodine. Their best best start was first twice in the spring at North Booksboro and Michigan. Their best finish was second in the fall at Darlington. Overall, they, they were able to score two poles, zero wins, three top fives, and nine top tens. Bodine was forced to miss a start in the fall race at Dover due to injury. In that race, Dick Triple filled in for Bodine, finishing 25th. Now, back over to the IndyCar side of things. They qualified three entries in the Indy 500. 
Roberto Guerrero in the number 40, finishing 28th. In the number 60, Jim Crawford finished 24th. In the number 80, Al Hunter finished 12th. Guerrero made 13 starts in total in that number 40 and 93. His best finish was 4th in New Hampshire. Eddie Cheever made the final three starts of the season in the number 40. His best finish was 10th at Nazareth Speedway. For the 1994 season, Brett Bodine returned for what ended up being his final season with the team. His best overall run would definitely be the inaugural Bridgeguard 400 at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Unfortunately, Bodine got into his older brother, Jeff Bodine, causing him to DNF and igniting a fight that would last a few years between the two brothers. Their best finish was second in the summer at Indy. Overall, they scored zero poles, zero wins, one top five, and six top ten finishes on their way to finishing 19th in final Cup Series points. King Racing ran one final season in the Kart Series. They signed Scott Goodyear to drive their number 40 full-time. His best finish was first in the summer at Michigan. This was the team's first and only Kart Series victory. They also had Andre Mottermany make two starts in their number 60, with our best finish at 7th at Toronto. At the conclusion of the 1994 Kart Series season, Bernstein sold off his IndyCar equipment and left the series. As for King Racing, they still remained active in the NASCAR Cup Series in 1995. To begin the season, they signed multiple-time World of Outlaws, World of Outlaws champion Steve Kinzer to drive the number 26 Quaker State Ford full-time. And run the number, and run the number 26 Quaker State Ford, like I said, full-time for the Cup Series Rookie of the Year honors. In the first five races of the season, Kinzer finished 40th or worse three of those times, and never finished better than 27th. They DNQ'd twice, therefore Bernstein pulled him out of the race car, and had Hutt Strickland take over for the rest of the season. But, about midway through the season, Bernstein's plans to pull out of the NASCAR, the same way he did a season prior at IndyCar in season's end, led to a fair part of number 26 Quaker State Ford team to break apart and find new jobs with different teams. Their best start was first in the fall at Rockingham. Their best finish was fourth in the spring at Dover. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, two top fives, and five top tens en route to a very disappointing 34th place in final under points. With that, Kenny Bernstein went back to what he knew best and what he found the most success doing, drag racing. Now... Some pretty decent drivers spent some time behind the wheel of the number 26 Quaker State car. Overall, the team scored eight poles and three victories, with a best point finish of eighth, with Ricky Rudd in 1989 season. As for his IndyCar division of the team, they scored one and only victory at Michigan in 1994. Thanks for watching, y'all. Take care.